Why I think the trade route is the best one for the Twins to acquire a frontline starting pitcher this offseason and who they may target if that's the case. It's all coming up on a winter meetings episode of Locked On Twins. You are Locked On Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome to the Lockdown Minnesota Twins podcast. Today is Sunday, December 4th, and I'm your gracious host, Nash Walker. Thanks for making Lockdown Twins your first listen every single day on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. And this is Nash Walker, four seasons hosting a daily podcast on the Minnesota Twins. Excuse me, three seasons hosting a pod, four seasons writing about the Twins at twinsdaily.com. I believe the best and most likely, I think by a long shot, avenue for the Twins to acquire a frontline starting pitcher this offseason is via trade. I'm going to tell you why today, and I'm going to give you some names of, of guys to watch, not only just for the Twins, but around baseball and who could be available on the starting pitching market via trade this offseason. I want to take us back. If we go back to the first week of March, let's say right after the lockout, first week of March in 2022, the Twins had a clear hole at short. And they had a clear hole at the front line of the rotation. They had already acquired Sonny Gray. So in this hypothetical, we're going back in time in our time machine. They had already acquired Sonny Gray. So we said, okay, and I said on the show, they need a shortstop. They don't have a shortstop. And they need another front line starter. And the I wrote this article at twinsdaily.com. And it was there was this yellow brick road I wrote about for the twins. And this yellow brick road was going to take you to the promised land. And in this yellow brick road plan, the twins were to acquire Trevor Story and trade for Frankie Montas from Oakland. You fill the shortstop hole, you fill the frontline starter hole. Now, I will say, both of those players, you know, Montas in New York, he was good again for Oakland to start the year, really struggled. Trevor Story had a rough year. Injuries, wasn't the same guy he was in Colorado when he was playing second base. He was an outstanding second baseman because you know he's a lifetime shortstop and has been a good one in the past. So, of course, he was great at second defensively, but the bat – was very streaky. He just wasn't the same guy. But it's more about where we were at at that time with the Twins and their roster. It was they need to go get an impact shortstop, and they just cleared Donaldson's money off the book, so that became a possibility, and it became a legitimate, I think, talking point was Trevor Story, and the Twins, I know, were interested in Trevor Story, but it didn't happen with him. And they did add a shortstop in Carlos Correa, but they didn't add the frontline starter at the time. And I figured that would come via trade. Now, at the deadline, they thought they were getting a frontline starter in Tyler Malley. I still have hope he can be that guy in 2023. They did it at the deadline, but they did not do it coming out of the lockout when that was a path. And I think right now, in this moment, it's the same. They need an impact shortstop, and they need a frontline starter. And I think... The need for a frontline starter is underplayed because the rotation is quote unquote full with five pitchers, and you have some depth, hopefully, and some Edwards Richardson and Louis Varlin and Josh Weiner. You have depth beyond your five of Sonny Gray, Tyler Malley, Joe Ryan, uh, Kent Maeda, and Bailey Ober. You have some depth beyond those five. So I think it's it's downplayed the need for a frontline starter. But they need a frontline starter. They need a game one starter. And I think what's most likely to happen is the Twins wait until the trade deadline and see where they're at and do something like last year, which is try to acquire a frontline starter midway through the season when you see where you're at. But I think you know they can have a really great first half and not have to worry about it if they go out and get a frontline starter. The The issue now is after the, the pandemic and the shortened season and pitcher injuries this year, specifically with the shortened spring training, I think teams more than ever are less willing to part with starters because you realize you need 10, 12, 15 starters in a season sometimes. It's ridiculous. Guys get hurt constantly. Pitchers get hurt constantly. So I think teams, even teams with six good starters, Houston, you know, I look at who's probably going to add another starter in free agency, maybe even Justin Verlander coming back, but they have a bunch of good starters. I don't think Houston wants to trade out of that group because they know they'll need all of them. They will need all six, seven, eight, nine guys they like and are you know good pitchers who teams covet. I think that's equally true for a team like the Marlins, except the Marlins, I think, are the best match with the Twins on paper. 
what the Marlins are looking for is big time bats, you know, corner, just impact, impact offense. And the Twins are looking for a frontline starter. And I think that those two teams match up really well. But Miami's, they've been weird. Like Kim Ang last year thought it was a prime opportunity to trade away from that glut in the rotation and just it didn't happen and now pablo lopez sounds like they're they're listening again on pablo lopez but that fit to me is the best out of any team i think the marlins the brewers and always the rays we'll get to the rays today too always the rays because they're a wild card but almost every other team you know the you look at the rebuilding teams that's where you start like who's rebuilding who has a, a strong starting pitcher on a rebuilding team like frankie montas last year like tyler malley like sonny gray you look for those teams first Within those, like half of the rebuilding teams are in the American League Central. So I'm trying to like weed out those teams because interdivision trade is just less likely. I know the Twins traded for Michael Fulmer, so it's not impossible, but it's just less likely. And then you look at the other rebuilders, and many of those teams have already traded away their frontline starters. And other teams like Washington or the D backs, the starters who they signed a long-term deal. That's part of the reason why they're in the position they're in. Madison Bumgarner, Patrick Corbin, Steven Strasburg. Those, you don't want those guys. You don't want their money, their contracts on your books. It's hard to find. It's like a needle thread. But I did find seven guys. I would say two classified today, maybe three classified today as frontline starters. Maybe a few of them have frontline upside. And then the others are you know mid to back of the rotation starters who – you know, the Twins could add and would help. Like I said, you need six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven pitchers would help, but less of the focus, I think, for them this offseason. At least I think it should be less of a focus this offseason. So who are these names? Who's likely for the Twins? Who's more unlikely? I'm super excited about this. We'll get to it after this word from BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball to soccer and esports. We've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. They're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline is where the game starts. Again, BetOnline is so easy to use on your phone, desktop, iPad, whatever you're looking for. BetOnline.net is great for any consumer, for any user, whatever you're looking for, odds, trends, every professional amateur league out there, football, basketball, soccer, esports, hockey, any sport, anytime. They even have sports podcasts. If you're done listening to your lockdown podcast and you want more, go to betonline.net. It's your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You might be thinking, Nash, why won't the Twins just sign Justin Verlander? Why won't the Twins just sign Carlos Rodon? Why didn't the Twins sign Jacob deGrom, who just inked a five-year, $175 million deal or whatever it was with Texas? Why don't they do that? They should have done it last year with these frontline starters. They should have done it, you know, maybe not with Robbie Ray, but I would love to see Marcus Stroman in this rotation right now. I don't think he is a an ace by any means, but I think he's a, a number two, you know, in a competitive rotation. And I have made the claim, like, they need better, but I think... Marcus Stroman's on the Sonny Gray level, and it, Sonny Gray or better this offseason should be the standard for the pitchers they signed. I would have loved to see Kevin Gaussman. I think he's a clear number one. So they had opportunities to do that last year. Now, some of those were landmines. Robbie Ray, Eduardo Rodriguez, some of those don't look so hot. At least after a year, I would bet on those guys bouncing back, maybe. Uh, in Rodriguez's case, he was away from the team for personal reasons. Ray just lost some velo and wasn't the same guy as he was when he won the, the Cy Young Award in 2021. Last year, they should have done it. This year, I think it's such a unique class because you have those top dogs, the the veteran, you know, future Hall of Famers. DeGrom may be a future Hall of Famer, you would think, you know, if he stays healthy, yes. And then Verlander, Clayton Kershaw is going back to the Dodgers. And then you have that one, one younger, younger frontline ace quality starter, one, and it's Carlos Rodon, who's clearly that guy. And because of that, you're hearing of how many teams interested in Carlos Rodon. I feel like the Royals are interested in Carlos Rodon. Like everybody and their mother is interested in Carlos Rodon because of that reason. Like Verlander's going to have his pick. He's going to get probably $40 million a year. You're looking at a Max Scherzer type contract. That really limits his market to a couple big, big market teams. I'm not saying the Twins shouldn't be involved in that, but I just don't see a scenario where Justin Verlander's in Minnesota pitching for the Twins. So he's out. DeGrom signed that huge deal with Texas. And then it's Rodon. 
It's it's Rodon, and that's I think what a lot of teams see on the board. Because beyond Rodon, you have some intriguing starters like Jameson Tyone. Sounds like his market is great, awesome for him. He's not that guy, you know. He's not in the Carlos Rodon, Jacob Degrom, Justin Verlander tier at all. Then you have Kodai Senga, who's kind of a wild card coming over. You don't know. He could be in that tier. You have guys who could be in that tier, but as of today, they aren't. And that's why I think this market for the Twins is is less appealing this time around than it was a year ago because you don't have those options. You don't have those front line, you know, Gaussman, Ray at the time, Gaussman, Ray, Rodriguez, Stroman, that tier, it's not really there this year. I think those guys were viewed. Ray was coming off a Cy Young winning season. Gaussman had a great year in, in San Francisco. Those pitchers were viewed as legit frontline starters last year. And this year, I don't think Tyone is. I, I don't think Nathan Yavaldi is. He could be. You know, they could be. I spoke on them on this show that I think they could be with some tweaks or some health or, you know, getting back to who they once were in Yavaldi's case in 2021. But they're not right now, which is why I think it's more likely the Twins will go out and get a pitcher via trade. So who could be available to the twins? I have seven names here and we'll start with kind of the rotation fillers, like depth pieces. They could add Jose or in Houston. They almost traded him at the deadline. Jim Crane, their owner nixed it. It was a Urquidy for Contreras swap in Chicago. Jose or uh, you know, back of the rotation starter. He's a three or four in a good rotation, but you know, Houston, like I said, unlikely to want to part with with their depth it's possible they do jose arquiti right-handed for those who don't know like lower 90s fastball good changeup. he's a good good starting pitcher and he's under team control through 2025 this is his first year of arbitration expected to make 3.2 million in arb he's a good pitcher he's 28 or is going to be 28 he's a three or a four and he would add some depth to the twins rotation but they don't really need that depth if they were to do it though i think jose arquiti is somebody to watch uh, on the trade market Chris Flexen, pretty similar in Seattle. Seattle and Jerry DePoto always swing in deals. They're always on the move. So I wouldn't rule that out. Flexen, I've seen his name already thrown around this offseason. Similar. I, I don't like watching Flexen pitch. I've watched him pitch against the Twins last year. Uh, I believe in that opening day series, he pitched against the Twins. But he's under team control through just this year in 2023. Slated to make $8 million. He's 28 very similar, like low 90s, right-handed pitcher, going to add some depth to the rotation, nothing flashy, nothing exciting. And a free agent after this year, along with Mally and Gray and Maeda, you'd be losing four pitchers from your rotation if you were to trade for Chris Flexen. Uh, those are my like rotation fillers. Who is a frontline starter who would be interesting or has the upside, I think, to potentially be that guy? That's coming up after this word from Simply Safe. Simply Safe Security. At Locked On Twins, we believe home should be where you and your family feel safest, especially over this holiday season. And this holiday season, you can give yourself and your family the gift of peace and protection with the number one rated home security system, Simply Safe. And right now, Simply Safe is offering Locked On Twins listeners 40% off a new security system. But don't put this off. Simply Safe was named the best home security system of 2022 by U.S. News and World Report. A third year in a row in an emergency, 24-7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real so you can get higher priority police response. Don't miss your chance to save big on my favorite security system. Get 40% off any new system at simplysafe.com slash lockdown MLB today. That's simplysafe.com slash lockdown MLB. There is no safe like Simply Safe. Frontline starters who fit the Twins bill here. Zach Gallen is the prize. Diamondbacks, right-hander, five-win pitcher in 2022. He is awesome. 254 ERA, 305 FIP. Strikeout rate is solid. The whip led the National League, 0 0.913. Hits per nine, 5.9 led all of baseball. He's young. The Marlins flipped him for Jazz Chisholm, which is like a, a high-profile prospect trade at the time. He's 27. He's uh, not a free agent until I believe after 2025. I will confirm that. I think it's after 2025. All of that meaning his price tag is going to be exorbitant. And I think for somebody like Zach Gallen, it's a little bit similar. Yes, free agent after 2025. This is his first year of arbitration. Uh, four and a half million. Measly salary. He's clearly a frontline starter, you know, slash ace. Like Carlos Rodon. If Zach Gallen's made available 
the D-backs are going to have their pick of prospect packages. And the Twins have to thread this needle of they don't have an elite system by any means. It's a pretty average system. They've already traded from that system. You know, their top 100 guys are borderline top 100 guys in Spencer Steer and Christian Encarnacion Strand. They've already traded from that. It's an average system. If Zach Gallon's made available, again, you know, the Dodgers are going to be involved. The I mean, I guess that's interdivision, but teams with much better farm systems than the Twins are going to be involved. It would take a lot to acquire Zach Gallon. So he's at the top, top of the market in terms of guys I think could be available. I don't even know if the D backs want him made available. I think they think for some odd reason that they're going to win in 2023. Maybe they will, but it's a tough division to win in, and they're not going to do it without Zach Gallon. So if that's the case, if they have any inkling that maybe they're going to compete, trading away Zach Gallon would make it would make no sense. The the one who we talked about last year, and I thought at the time would have been a really savvy, like interesting move was Tyler Glass now. And, and part of this is just personal to me because I love Tyler Glass now and I love watching him pitch and he's huge and he throws gas and his curveball is disgusting. But in his career, Tyler Glass now, for as nasty as he is, like he is, he's nasty and he's six foot eight, right handed, monster. He has a career ERA at 4.00 on the dot in 409 and two thirds innings. That's an ERA plus of 104, 4% better than league average. But in the last two years, he's been limited by injury and he's only reached 100 innings one time. That was in 2018. 2018 was the only time he reached 100 innings. He threw 111 and two thirds. So this is a, you know, purely upside, hope he's healthy for the playoffs type of play because if he is, he he's the type of pitcher you would want on the mound in game one. Even though the, the numbers, like the raw numbers haven't been there, he is nasty his stuff his fastball reaches triple digits straight over the top 12-6 curve tons of whiffs 2021-2022 combined made 16 starts exceptional 257 ERA 279 FIP almost 13 strikeouts per nine he is disgustingly good so why would the Rays trade him what's the race it's the race they extended him oddly enough extended him and this contract is so interesting and really crazy. I think he's going to make 5.35 million in 2023. And then he's guaranteed 25 million in 2024. So he's guaranteed 25 million in 24. I don't see any scenario where the Rays are, are, are paying Tyler glass. Now 25 million in 2024. I think that is massive for them. Maybe, I mean, maybe they're, they were in on, it sounds like they were in on the Freeman market last year. So you never know. But I just don't think that's going to happen. So I do think he'll be traded before 2024. Whether that's now, I don't know. But for Glass now, fits in because the Twins would have a six-man rotation coming out of spring training. I think he would start every sixth day. You're hoping he gets to 120, 130 innings. And you could argue, like, why would the Twins invest in another oft-injured starting pitcher? And I would say, I don't disagree with you, but his upside is massive. And he would he would have the best stuff of any starter the Twins have had since Johan. And I think probably the best stuff any any starter in Twins history would be Tyler Glass now if they made that trade. Uh, I just always will bring him up because I I love watching him and I would go crazy if they traded for him because I think he's he's just unreal. So Gallon and Glass now at the top. Pablo Lopez is also a frontline starter. We've, we've touched on Pablo quite a bit. Miami Marlins getting closer to free agency now. So I think that price tag will be lower and he's making more in arbitration. But if the Marlins haven't done it since, you know, haven't done it up to this point, I just don't know if they're going to do it. Like he's a free agent after 2024. Maybe it makes more sense to trade him now than it did a year ago. But I would argue his value was, was the highest last year. His ERA was higher this year. He didn't pitch as well, but he threw more innings. So it's, he reached 180 innings in 2022. I don't know if teams value that as much. Like, do you value lesser innings, higher quality, but less innings because of injury? Or do you value more innings at lower quality? Like he's able to stay healthier. He pitches at a very, very pitcher friendly park. I like Pablo Lopez, but there's something about him where I just don't see him as having that much upside. I think he is on the Sonny Gray level to be frank. And that's fine. Like I said, Sonny Gray or better. Pablo Lopez would be a nice acquisition, but again, for him, he's going to cost, he's going to cost prospect capital. And I, I like him. I, I just don't get excited about him. I don't think if it happened, twins rotation would be a lot better. You know, everybody gets pushed down a peg. You have three legitimate playoff starters in Lopez, Gray, and Mally. 
they would be better. I just don't get I don't get super excited about Pablo Lopez. Maybe there's more in the tank. He is a Twins type of pitcher because he is low 90s, good change up. He can reach the mid 90s, but good change up. Twins have valued that in the past, and uh, he's right handed, which is another a Twinsy type of acquisition. We'll see on Pablo Lopez if he's moved this off season. Some under the radar higher upside guys. Herman Marquez pitched an absolute gem against the Twins at Target Field in 2022. Flashes it. He's flashed it in the past where he has this deep, deep stable of, of very good weapons. Herman Marquez, 96-97, heavy sink, pitching in cores. Get him out of there. He'll be better. Always going to be the narrative. I like Herman Marquez. He's also on an extension as well. Colorado's so weird. I just don't know what they're doing. I never know what they're doing. Herman Marquez, 15.3 guaranteed this year, million. $16 million club option in 2024. It was a disastrous season in 2022. Like very, very bad for Armand Marquez. But he he recovered in the second half. Five ERA to finish the year. Expected ERA was 449. So some bad luck there. Expected FIP 402. Was a win and a half level player. But that was his lowest since, uh, you know, in his entire career. In terms of wins above replacement. 2021, he was awesome. Three and a half wins above replacement in 2021. FIP at 386. Really good stuff. Sometimes spotty command, but Armand Marquez could be a higher upside trade target for the Twins. And then the last one I have here is Brad Keller, who we've seen a lot. And the Twins have hit him in the past. Kansas City would be inner division. This is purely a stuff play. Brad Keller, kind of like Armand Marquez, big time sink. Velocity is there. Sometimes he looks like an ace. Other times he looks like the worst starter in baseball very much like Armand Marquez and Brad Keller on his contract is a free agent following this season, 7 million. He's going to make an arbitration projected. So maybe the Rose want to get that money off the books, came out of the bullpen a little bit last year, but there's upside. I think with him, perhaps maybe we don't know, get him out of there. See what happens. Those are my seven. Let me know what you think in the comments. I think it's much more likely the twins trade for a starter than they sign a starter this off season for all the reasons I mentioned. Uh, I don't like the market either way. I don't like either of the markets. I don't think there's going to be a lot of starting pitchers moved this offseason. Again, because I think teams are valuing the depth. I think teams really value their frontline starters because they know that they're very valuable. And for a team like the Twins with an average farm system, it's going to be difficult. Thank you so much for making Locked On Twins your first listen today. For your second listen today, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts on, the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day, and go Twins.